you need waiver wire help so we are here for you it's the week four man it goes quick waiver yeah. wire show here on the audible cecil lammy sigmund bloom starting with the quarterbacks and of course the full report will be available at footballguys.com check us out subscribe to footballguys.com but we have to start with andy dalton man <laughs> poor bryce young but andy dalton out there slinging it looking good getting wins catching w's eating w's like Jameis, like all right andy we see you red rider yeah, Dave Canales, let's mention him too. But Andy Dalton played one of the best games of his career. Really, seriously, take a look at it. And it's going to help Deontay Johnson. He lost to Adam Thielen. But uh, certainly two quarterback super flex leagues, he could be a key to your season. But even in one quarterback leagues, uh, we'll see going up against Cincinnati next week. But again, Dave Canales, we've seen what he's done to elevate quarterbacks. And we've seen Andy Dalton now show that even at this stage of his career, he is, and, and see, this is, I guess, another reminder that quarterback is a mental, emotional position as much as right. it is a physical position. Because Dalton doesn't, he's never given you much in the way of physical advantages, but obviously he understands how to execute this offense and made the Raiders look like a bad team. A lot of business decisions that Antonio Pierce yeah. had to go through here after this week. Yeah, they're going to have to deal with that. We'll see what Dalton can continue to do. We'll see what the Steelers continue to do with Justin Fields. Now, there's other quarterbacks other than Justin Fields, Bloom, and this is where you have to break down to everybody sure. how you do your waiver report. Yeah, and again, I don't know if Dalton's been picked up everywhere. He will be after this week. Uh, sure. Justin Fields, I don't know if he's been picked up everywhere. You're seeing the Steelers trust him more, and now he's the starter. Daniel Jones and... The Browns defense isn't bad, at least not as bad as the offense. Malik Neighbors, you're seeing how much Cease, I think this is one of those questions going into the season. Is Daniel Jones going to bring down Malik Neighbors or is Malik Neighbors going to elevate Daniel Jones? We're getting an answer through three weeks and Bo Nix. And you saw him get settled down. You saw a good opening drive. Of course, you're seeing his legs continue to come into play every game. And it is a Bo Nix offense, Cease, because I don't know who else's offense it would be for Denver. Yeah, well, he is the team's leading rusher after three games. <laughs> just like they drew it up. More on that in just a little bit. But as we transition to the running back report, and again, the full report available at footballguys.com, so make sure to check it out. But it's Bucky Irving. Now, Rashad White has been always somewhat limited by a skill set bloom, but he's also now limited by a groin injury. And right. you saw against the Broncos, he wasn't going to do much. Broncos who couldn't stop the run then stopped Rashad White. They couldn't stop Bucky Irving. So mm -hmm. is he smaller? Is he a scat back? Will he have to use him differently? Sure. I don't care. All I know is he can get nine carries and break it off for 70 yards. Surprise it wasn't 100. I mean, that's the type of big play weapon that Bucky Irving is and can be for your fantasy team. And I don't know that he has league winner upside, at least – while Rashad White's still playing and Rashad White still is an asset in the passing game, but this is going to be Bucky Irving's offense in or on early down sooner or later. And Tampa Bay's offense, we saw it maybe is one of the best offenses in the league. Again, let's give some credit to Denver's defense, but uh, there's some cracks showing after that game. Everything was difficult except for Bucky Irving. That was, and Chris Godwin, of course, every week you can set your watch by that. But Bucky Irving, the other thing I want to say while we're talking about him, Cease, is this is something you can go all the way back to the week after the draft. When Leon Cohen is saying, Bucky Irving, the way he hits the hole with urgency, fast to the hole, fast through the hole, that's what we're looking for. We're hoping that rubs off on the other guys, something to that effect. And you know, looking in your direction, Rashad White. So this was foreshadowed, sometimes paying attention to the stuff and then seeing if the results match the expectations can get you one step ahead. Yeah, one step ahead is what you need to be. And that's why you get Tyler Bidet. Now he is told PR that he wants his name pronounced bidet okay. so it's much like the Tyrod Taylor thing of sure. like Tyrod well it's Tyrod and Tyler Beatty is what he said a couple of years ago to a reporter so everyone was all it's Beatty I wish it was Batty Bloom I so wish it was Batty <laughs> but it's bidet he's using the French pronunciation uh so it is Tyler Bidet in the Broncos backfield who should clean things up <laughs> clean him up down there uh, should clean things up for the Broncos Please. backfield if he gets the opportunity. Now, full disclosure, I'll be in West Virginia this week with the Broncos as they stay at the Briarwood, Greenwood, Briarwood, Greenbrier, Greenbrier. I see. I knew it was something. Anyway, Greenbrier Wood 
as they stay there at the wherever and they get together before the Jets game. I'm going to see, and in the preview shows, have to give you Lassie Bar because unless Sean Payton talks about it, I can't say anything. If Tyler Bidet actually takes over for Javante. So there's the Bidet conversation. There's a Chuba Hubbard conversation mm -hmm. um, because of, you know, how the Carolina Panthers are now looking. So there's some backup running backs that uh, may not be bad. Well, of course, Chuba's not, but Bidet coming on might be a new starter and on your fantasy team. Yeah, I wonder what percentage of your audience is going to get the bidet joke. I think you're going to get a higher percentage here on the Audible than you're going to get in Denver Radio. But try it. Let us know how it goes. I like that. I'll the do second, it. It, I, I think that uh, more people need to know about bidets. Maybe you can become a, a standard feature in new homes. So, see, you foreshadowed this one. You said, I think it was just last week, like, try somebody else. Maybe it's bidet, baity, batty. Uh, try somebody because it's not right. Javante Williams. And we'll see if this running game can get on track. Mike Glinchy getting hurt kind of hurts there. Chuba Hubbard, if he's still out there, uh, you know, this is just another reminder of, of how Andy Dalton's going to elevate. Hey, if you have Jonathan Brooks, you're excited. All of a sudden, you're excited now, unless we start to hear that they're going to give Price another chance. I'm going to put some light here on Emmanuel Wilson again. Yes. Uh, getting a, a lot of touches yesterday, looking good, outplaying Josh Jacobs, to be honest. And Josh Jacobs is still going to be the lead back. Josh Jacobs still, you know, a couple of plays change, and he's still one of the best fantasy running backs so far. He's in a good offense. This team is good, but Emmanuel Wilson is really coming on. So I think, again, just like we did during the draft, you're going to think about players attached to offenses. And Emmanuel Wilson now with Marshawn Lloyd on IR, with A.J. Dillon on IR, we thought it was, well, Emmanuel Wilson by default has to be the backup. He showed no, no default here. He's a player, and if Josh Jacobs goes down, the numbers will come. He's a playmaker, and seeing him out there running – Got me excited about Marshawn Lloyd if he's ever going to be healthy. But anyway, yeah. that's for that's for later in the show or later a later show at a later date, mm -hmm. like with Blake Watson. Woo! Ooh. Pin, 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 pin. All right, let's get to the wide receivers again. Full report available at FootballGuys.com. But the wide receiver you want to start with is close to your heart, Bloom in yeah. Jennings. So let's let's yeah. talk about it. Yeah, and this was a guy who made a lot of plays back at Tennessee, but in the NFL vastly overlooked because he just didn't have that straight line speed thought of maybe as a big slot type. And uh, I think it was our, our good friend, Matt Waldman, somebody, I don't know actually, but somebody compared with Jennings to Brandon Marshall and Brandon Marshall didn't have great straight line speed either. What he was, was a bully when the ball was in the air and a player that was really hard to move a strong, determined mover, hard to get him off his route. Hard to get win that space when the ball's in the air. And see, I'll toss it back to you and say this. Juwan Jennings might be a player worth more than what it's going to take to get him because I think everyone's going to look at, well, Kittle's going to be back. Well, Debo right, Samuel's going right. to be back. And right. Jennings is going to... Uh, hey, hey, hey. Brandon Ayuk in his whole career has not put up a game like the one that Jennings put up yesterday. And some of this might be, well, it's the Rams when teams are playing the Rams. Okay, we'll see. But quarterback, wide receiver, chemistry quarterback wide receiver trust i don't care how much you think brock purdy cares how much brandon Ayuk's getting paid i don't think nope. he cares he nope. cares that he dropped a pass that was a turning point really they could have buried the rams in the first half last year if it wasn't for an Ayuk drop so i while i think that we're looking at the window closing for Jawan jennings because samuel kittle they should be back within you know week two well injuries can always recur there's that but also i think even without the injuries recurring this chemistry this connection has now been established and i don't think that we should just expect it's going to go away because nobody has looked better with brock Purdy throwing the ball this year than Juwan jennings did in week three yes and kyle shanahan doesn't care about no. how much guys are getting paid so i didn't want to pay him <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> right right i told you we didn't need to pay him we didn't know we got jennings i told you about jennings what are you doing john anyway their relationship is dynamic but anyway like yeah so uh, who's purdy's favorite guy the open guy jennings yeah. can be that so yeah let's make it happen let's talk about darnell mooney and speaking of making it happen uh yeah mooney and that speed Looking pretty good from Kurt there. So uh, Mooney yeah. and others at the position. Yeah, there's a lot of possibilities at wide receiver this week. I'll just run something down. Again, subscribe to Football Guys, and you'll get the full report with percentages, with recommendations on who to drop, who to drop them for, et cetera. Uh, but 
Darnell Mooney is now getting the target volume, not just the ability to make the big plays downfield. We need Kirk Cousins to round into form, or we need Michael Penix to get on the field. But that fact that Darnell Mooney has done what he's done so far is a really good sign. DeAndre Hopkins, if he was dropped, he's still more depth than someone I want to plug in every week unless Will Levis really learns to lean on him. Jalen Naylor is really interesting. Three touchdowns in three games. And yeah. when Jordan Addison and TJ Hawkinson are back, why isn't Naylor just the deep target here? Sam Darnold, everybody. Wandale Robinson. So we've had one game where the Giants had to pass, one game where they didn't really need to pass, and then one game where they chose to pass against the Browns. The Browns are going to be a, a pass funnel defense. Vegas, Gardner Minshew next week, because they're good against the run, but you can pass on them. And Wandale Robinson has a solid game. So he remains kind of like Hopkins in consideration as a flex. Alan Lazard. Two out of three good weeks. First one to get three touchdowns in the NFL uh, receiving. And it's not going to go away with Aaron Rodgers playing well. Again, we're looking at not just the player themselves, but the quarterback elevating them. I don't know if the quarterback's elevating to Mario Douglas, but now we saw at least the Patriots realize he's the one guy of their wide receivers who can uncover. There's one yeah. guy who can consistently create separation. It's Pop Douglas. Calvin Austin, with that speed in Justin Fields and Cease, as a Steelers fan, I get chills tingles thinking about that play because that was a play that Justin Fields had to make a quick decision put the ball between defenders he put a raid on Calvin Austin and basically clinched the game and there's your second option emerging the speed option we know with Justin Fields especially off of play action he's got a great arm and sometimes eerie bucket accuracy downfield that's Calvin yeah. Austin yeah. Uh, so you know I, I think that we're looking at maybe even Michael Wilson as we saw him as a possession target he had a touchdown week one for uh, Kyler Murray going up against Washington next week. So if you need a spot start, but we're seeing some churn at wide receiver, but sees nothing like the churn that's going to make your stomach churn at tight end. Yes. Uh, and I guess instead of having a couple of tight end segments, Bloom, I should toss it to you all at once uh, with, with yeah. your no fan Tyler Conklin. Whack a mole. Talk. Yeah. Wha a truly whack a mole. You called it something else, though, off air. You're like, this is your. The one week wonders. Your one week wonders at tight end. So. Here you go, buddy. I apologize. I'm going to get out of your way so you can sure. talk about these tight ends. Speaking of one-hit wonders, what was your favorite one-hit wonder from the 90s? Because it was the decade of one-hit wonders. Um, see, Missing Persons had a couple of hits. Uh -huh. But like, do you hear me? Oh, yeah. Do you yeah. care? Yeah. I hear, I mean, there's so what are words ones. for when no one listens anymore? Right? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. a good there one. Go. No, I mean, back, baby. It does. It does. There's, I mean, I don't even know how we can classify. Like, who's the Macarena? Who's the I'm too sexy for my shirt? You know, uh, who's the who let the dogs out? Uh, who who let Kate Otten out? And then he fumbled. Short catches. I think that's one <laughs> that is more. Well, look, I mean, you, you, we're playing whack-a-mole here. And it's, you know, it was Hunter Henry. Now Hunter Henry goes away, right? Isaiah Likely. Isaiah Likely goes away. This is going to be the game. So who could we get now? It, Kate Otten, I'm bringing up first, not to say pick up Kate Otten against Philadelphia, but to say the defense that Kate Otten played, Denver Broncos, Tyler Conklin is one of the other, maybe he'll be a two-week wonder. So maybe we would prioritize Conklin ahead of Otten. Cole Komet, it was mainly garbage time, but again, uh, you know, Chicago against the Rams, maybe it's there against that pass defense as we saw San Francisco for a little while able to exploit it. Noah Fant actually did something uh, Detroit's defense is pretty tough and Terry McBride didn't do much. So you know, these are your one hit wonders. And of the four, the one maybe with the best chance to hit twice is Tyler Conklin. But I think the other thing we have to step back and say, Cease, is every year, and really I've been writing this up for almost 20 years now, and certainly in the last eight, nine, 10 years, Cease, the refrain is the same. Speaking of the one hit wonders. Oh, tight end's actually deep this year. Tight end's actually going to be deep this year. And there are lots of late round and there's ascendant players. This year, tight end was so deep that it actually pushed the top tier down to the fourth, fifth round. You can get one of the best tight ends in fantasy football in the fourth or fifth round. I mean, this is me talking, by the way, in the preseason. How can you not take advantage of that? I think, Cease, you got to go to what Jake Ferguson, Brock Bowers, Dallas Goddard. So you got to get to tight end 9, 10, 11 before you're even happy with what you have. And even those guys aren't doing it every week. So if you're suffering a tight end, you're not alone. Mm. <clears throat> I'm going to go do it. Uh, yeah. By the way, I have a whack-a-mole story for you off there. 
Okay. Remind me of that. But let's remind everyone this part of the show because it is time for audience participation. There's some slappies that aren't getting it done. So you've got to do one thing and one thing only. Help me out. Help Bloom out. Say it with us now as you cue the Chuck D. Bloom. Week four, shut him down. Jalen Warren. I mean, he's not even really a backup. He's splitting it with Cordell Patterson at this point. It's not your Harris's backfield. Gus Edwards, yeah, he's a backup. Uh, Jalen Wright, I think I saw a stat, a stat cease, and I'm not big on EPA and things like that, but I, I believe that the overall rating, cumulative rating for the Dolphins offense yesterday, I guess I should have said Tyler, Taylor Heineke and Tim Boyle for Superflex Deep Leagues, by the way, um, on that note, minus 25. Minus, how do you even do that? How can you even get to minus 25? That's like a black hole. The black hole that is absorbing the value of Jalen Wright and everyone else. And then Johnny Smith, you know, let me have a special shut him down segment for Miami Dolphins. Just for the, <laughs> just for the Miami Dolphins. And see, so I'll toss it back to you. I know my answer to this one, but I know people are waiting to hear. Is it time to shut down Javante Williams? Shut him down last week. Last week, yeah. Shut him down this week. Yeah, shut him down and then we'll see if Bidet takes over in that backfield because they need a change. By the way, Jillian McLaughlin, his role will be the same. Right. So it's not like he'll get an increased role. He can't no. he can't do that. Um Beatty would get the increased role. Or Bidet, right. sorry. Right. And then we're waiting on Blake Watson, <clears throat> another minute a Memphis back maybe to make an impact. But yeah, but with, with, and I think with Javante Williams, I know we've been waiting, we've been waiting, we've been waiting. It's not gonna happen. You know, unfortunately, and since you were on this and even as the media coverage got more positive you were always tapping the brakes on javante williams long-term prospects because of the nature of his injury and i'm afraid to say that maybe he got something back when sean payton made him lose weight during the <laughs> offseason all right you know the something but not enough and he'll never get back to what he was with injury and that's sad you know mm -hmm. for every jk dobbins there's five Javante Williams or 10 Javante Williams because it's a brutal, brutal game. So it, it was with no joy, I say, that we shut down Javante Williams. Yeah, yeah, there you go. But the opposite of that is you get to hold on to some of these players. So in week four, Bloom, who are some of your hold ons? Please hold on to your Green Bay receivers. Maybe even Devon, Dontavian Wicks, depending on how deep your league is. All right, this is a great offense. This offense, Matt LaFleur, Adam Stenovich, they set up Malik Willis for success. What kind of success are they going to achieve with a rested now and given enough time to come all the way back, Jordan Love. So Romeo Dobbs, Christian Watson, Jaden Reed, even Dontavian Wicks, Tucker Craft. Don't be shutting these guys down. Maybe Kraft is maybe Kraft is a, a player you should look at also at tight end this week. Josh Downs tied for the team lead in targets. And let's give it time for Anthony Richardson. Oh, yeah, that's another one. Anthony Richardson. I'll get to that in a second. But Josh Downs can still emerge as the number one target in this offense. And it's going to be a vertical pass offense. Think Rashid Shahid light as far as the kind of fantasy impact that Josh Downs can have. I'm going to mention Jerome Ford, just because anytime somebody's going to dominate touches in the backfield and nobody else has shown they deserve touches. Now, Cleveland's offense is in shambles, but we also saw Carolina get the running game going against Vegas, so maybe Cleveland can try with all their injuries. I don't know. But Jerome Ford, just because he's a lead back, he shouldn't be on the waiver wire, even though he didn't do much until garbage time. And then I'll just say, don't drop Anthony Richardson. Don't drop him. Don't play him against the Steelers. No, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. Watch him drop four touchdowns on the Steelers. But don't drop him. And in some ways, we were expecting this. And yes, it may be a dead end. And I'm not trying to make excuses for him. But he still has a constellation of talents and an offensive coordinator that sets him up for fantasy success. And now you have Jonathan Taylor putting defenses on notice. So I hope that Shane Steichen is able to leverage that and get Anthony Richardson on track. I just know that I would rather Anthony Richardson languish on my bench. I never play him again this year if he doesn't get over out of this slump than see him start to become what we think he can be later on this year on someone else's roster and someone else's lineup.
Well, hopefully we can help out your fantasy teams. That's why we are here to see Salami Sigmund Bloom. We are the Audible. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Do us a favor. Subscribe to footballguys.com. If you want to check out the show, you get Sigmund's full waiver wire report every single week. That and more. Tens of thousands of pages of content every regular season. Of course, it is the one and only footballguys.com. He's Sigmund Bloom. You follow him on all the socials. Well, Twitter X. <laughs> at Sigma Bloom and uh, check him out there. Check out the Audible on Twitter, X at the Audible. I'm at Cecil Lammy saying, watch these videos wherever they pop up, wherever they may be. You watch them and like, comment, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you never miss a vid. He's Sig. I'm Cecil. We are the Audible. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned and stay frosty. Thank you.